This tutorial is about the basics of Wi-Fi and MQTT data transmission used to monitor and control IoT devices. You will learn pushing sensor and physical event data to a responsive dashboard and triggering tweets or other notifications with an ESP32, Adafruit I.O. and IFTTT. Most likely you will want to operate your devices unattended. The code samples demonstrate three ways to automatically connect and reconnect in case of a momentary loss of Wi-Fi or power. In the description below the video you will find a link to a GitHub repository including a wiring schematic, a bill of materials and three extensively commented code samples. First of all, go to Adafruit I.O. and sign up for a free account. A free account is sufficient for this tutorial. Copy your username and key for coding. Set up two feeds that collect your data. The first feed receives physical push button events. The second feed receives sensor data every few seconds. Here you have a list of all feeds and their keys for coding. Next, set up a responsive dashboard. Name the dashboard and provide a short description. Here you have a list of all dashboards and their keys for coding. You can populate your dashboard with different display blocks. The first block will show you physical push button events. It works just like a physical RGB LED. The second block will chart your sensor data. You can format the line graph's display axis and range. And you can also chart different kinds of data in one. Position and resize your blocks to create a good dashboard layout. Next, if you haven't got one already, you need to sign up for a Twitter account where the messages you trigger will be posted. You also need to sign up with IFTTT. It acts like a bridge that links services together. In this case, IFTTT links Adafruit I.O. to Twitter. Click the left plus icon to select your triggering service. Find and select Adafruit. For the trigger itself, choose Monitor a feed. Select the physical event feed and a triggering condition. Now click the right plus icon to select your action service. Find and select Twitter. For the action itself, choose Post a tweet and compose your message. Review and add a timestamp in the applet settings to make each tweet unique so that Twitter accepts it. As you can see, very few parts are required to put a basic IoT device together. Here we are augmenting an Adafruit Metro Mini with an Adafruit Airlift Featherwing ESP32, which provides Wi-Fi and Internet connectivity. Even with a very basic device, like the one shown and demonstrated in this tutorial, you can filter, process and transmit data of several different sensors at once. For real use in the field, replace the 9V block with a lithium-ion battery or enhance your device with a solar panel-powered battery charging circuit. Of course, for your own projects, you can find all-in-one devices and alternative parts on the market. Let's begin with the most basic solution. Thirteen B one. The first code sample continuously runs two functions from loop: one to connect and reconnect to the Wi-Fi hotspot, and one to connect and reconnect to the MQTT broker. After uploading the code, the device establishes a connection to the hotspot and broker and begins transmitting. In this most basic example, we transmit a random number every 7 seconds. The RGB LED flashes white after each successful transmission. When we switch over to the Adafruit I.O. feed, we can see our data arriving, 
both in the line graph and data table below. A row of grey and blue dots near the top of the browser window indicates that the connection is live. Each transmitted data packet is also printed to the serial monitor. When the hotspot is disabled, for example by a reset from the internet service provider or a power outage, the data transmission stops. The serial monitor shows the loss of connection and no more data is sent. The line graph, data table and blue dots at Adafruit.io are also no longer updating. The device cycles the RGB LED between yellow and green. It attempts to reconnect for as long as the hotspot is down. Once it is re-enabled, the device will reconnect to the Wi-Fi hotspot and MQTT broker and resumes transmitting data. While troubleshooting, always observe the loss of connection and reconnection by looking at the row of grey and blue dots when you are not using the serial monitor. Finally, the RGB LED is flashing every 7 seconds and the device is up and running again. The serial monitor shows the data packets are transmitted. At last, we switch over to battery powered operation and the device will keep on transmitting. While two separate connection and reconnection functions running from loop do work, it is not the most elegant or flexible solution. The next example achieves the same with state machine code. Please see the GitHub repository for detailed code comments. Thirteen B two. Like shown in the first example, once the code is uploaded, the device seeks a connection to the Wi-Fi hotspot and MQTT broker. The RGB LED indicates with red and green if both connections are successfully established. As before, we remove the USB cable for battery-powered operation. Over at Adafruit.io, we see our data arriving. The RGB LED flashes white every 7 seconds. This time, we disrupt the power supply to simulate a battery change in the field, or a solar panel that is unable to recharge it. As expected, the line graph, data table and blue dot indicator show that data is no longer arriving. For autonomous deployments, it is a good idea to also transmit the battery voltage so you can monitor it remotely or trigger a message when it is below a certain threshold. When your device is powered again, it re-establishes the Wi-Fi hotspot and MQTT broker connections and as before, data begins to arrive every 7 seconds. In another tutorial, we will look at a sleep timer to reduce battery power consumption. The third and last example is using state machine code 2, but this time, more realistically, 
we will transmit sensor data and generate a tweet when a physical event occurs. We will also look at setting up a responsive dashboard that can be shared online with others. 13b3 After uploading, brightness-dependent values from the photoresistor are transmitted every 5 seconds. The momentary switch button waits to be pressed. As mentioned, the last device is more applicable and realistic. We add a photoresistor and momentary switch. That way, we have real sensor data for our responsive dashboard and we can demonstrate how to trigger tweets and other messages from physical events. Like shown in both examples before, we power the device from a battery as we would in the field for autonomous deployments. Over at Adafruit IO, we created a simple responsive dashboard, graphing the photoresistor's brightness values over time and indicating when the momentary switch button is pressed. The line graphs X and Y axis scale correspond to the brightness values that arrive every 5 seconds, but you can send fixed ranges too. To create a dashboard, different configurable blocks are available to visualize data or to control other devices. A control block, like the one shown here, allows for remote adjustment of RGB LED animations, servo or stepper motors and IoT devices. Back to our device, we see that a sudden change in the sensor's vicinity is reflected in our data stream 5 seconds later. While this is ok for environmental factor monitoring or control of latency tolerant devices, you may want to upgrade to Adafruit IO Plus to reduce latency to 1 second. The code ensures that no matter how long the button is pressed, only one signal is transmitted. On IFTTT, we see that our applet picked up the Adafruit I.O. momentary switch button state and posted a tweet. On Twitter, we see that our tweet arrived 28 minutes after IFTTT was triggered. For an alarm, a text message is better. And now it's your turn. Thank you for watching and listening.